So I ordered a pair of Van Rysel's new carbon racing shoe. Um, for, I think it retails for about £169. This is not a review where I'm just going to go over all of the features, um, all of the specs basically that you can see on the website already. Um, I know these shoes have had some really good reviews online. Uh, if you look at Decathlon's website, they're highly rated. Um, I believe the Decathlon man had a review of these a couple of months back and he, he says they're brilliant shoes. Uh, Kimo the Cyclist, like I can't remember his YouTube name, or I think that might be it, also had a review online basically saying the same thing, that they're really great shoes. Um, I've had a very different experience. Um, I would not recommend these shoes. Um, but the main reason why I'm returning them is, is that plain and simple, they don't fit me. Um, but I actually want you to discount that point, right? Because all of our feet are different. Um, just because a shoe doesn't fit my feet doesn't mean it won't necessarily fit yours. Um, but I think this shoe is for someone who, first of all, fits the shoe. I mean, that's an obvious point. But someone who fits the shoe and is actually also willing to accept some of the compromises or the corners that um, Van Rysel have cut in order to get this shoe down to a price of £169. And I think for me personally, the corners that have been cut to get to that price um, aren't things that I would accept personally, even if the shoe had fit me. Um, and so, yeah, I'm just going to spend this review going into details to, first of all, how the shoe fits me. And then second of all, you know, discounting the fact that the shoes don't fit, why I still don't think they're good shoes. And I think, you know, if you have £170 to spend on shoes, you know, if you just hold on to that cash for a couple more months and actually save up and try and get a shoe that's £100 more, the difference is night and day. And I, I really don't think really personally shoes is the area to be cutting corners. But this is the interest of you. I don't want to get too far into that. Um, yeah, so I, I'll, I'll show you the shoes. I'll unbox them and yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get started. So yeah, I, I ordered these online. Um, they're actually selling like hotcakes. Um, my feet measure, well, my, my right foot is actually a bit longer than my uh, left. My right foot measures at 285 millimeters. My left foot measures at 280. I had a shoe fit, um, so I do know my measurements. I will do a measurement actually of the width of the um, insole because I know that on the Cathlon's website, they actually haven't got a... Um, anything in their size guide on what the actual width of the shoe is. Obviously the width of the insole isn't reflective of the width of the shoe itself. Um, the upper is obviously gonna be slightly wider to accommodate the upper part of your foot. Um, but I still think it'll be useful information. Um, again, as I said, these are a size 45. Um, this is boxed like this because I'm returning them back to the store, but obviously I'm doing the unboxing as if you were actually to have had the shoe. Um, the unboxing is really nice. Um, this is the shoe, of course you've definitely seen it before. Um, I've had to keep it in pristine condition in order to be able to return them. As I said, uh, these are an EU size 45. They do look really good. Don't get me wrong, they do look really good. Um, and there is, I mean, well, let me take this up first so I can show you, try and get us, see if I can try and flex the sole in any way. Um, there is the slightest, I mean, if I keep that there and I try and push down from here. Yeah, no flex. I was gonna say slightest. There is there is no flex in that shoe. Yeah, it's a solid carbon sole. Um obviously that's the cleats there. Um I don't know if I can get closer to the camera, you can sort of see the cleat position. Um and it looks really nice, actually, it does. Um I wasn't too sure about the design choice to make this white. I know on their cheaper shoes, which I think are about £89, um, on their white version of the shoe, actually, the base here, which is, I think, sort of like a plasticky rubber material, is black, even though the shoe is white. And I thought that would have been a good idea with this shoe. I mean, on your first, your the first time you, you, you put your feet down, these are going to get dirty. So um, when I was trying them on, I had to be really careful. Obviously, I know the Cathlon's return policy, so I tried them on on carpet. Um, just made sure my feet, my, my sorry, my, my feet obviously and my hands were clean. I didn't want to get them dirty. Um, but yeah, they are a good looking shoe. Um, a lot of people see these dials and think, oh, you know, what's this sort of fake knockoff? They are actually the same um, LI2 dials as the BOA system has. Um, and as you can see, they are quite low profile. Um, again, they just tie up like this um, on both sides. My first criticism, and there's going to be several is that I do wish that the dials were 
placed a bit further apart. Um, they are quite close together. So when I actually put my foot in the shoe and try and get that lock down, it, it kind of, maybe it's not even the dials. Maybe I would have just preferred if the actual um, tightening went further down towards my forefoot around about here. So I feel really tight here really locked down here but i would like that a little bit further down and that co probably could have been achieved actually if the lower dial was a bit further down um that's sort of my first criticism but that's that's again more so towards how the shoe fits me um what do i want to do from here i think i might want to go straight into and, and actually show you what the insole looks like so this is the insole it's uh I'll put the shoe down um obviously it's it's just a flimsy you're going to want to basically replace them and get something a lot more substantial as soon as you get the shoe. Again, this is a size 45. I will go into the fit and how this does not fit me later. Um, let me grab a ruler and I'm going to give you the width measurement of these in a size EU45. So I've actually just got myself a ruler. Um, and I'm just going to measure actually the width at the longest point of the insole. Of course, that's not going to match up to the width of the of the shoe itself but it will give you an indication as to whether or not it, it, it will work for you um so from i believe the longest point of the shoe i'm going to sort of press that down that width is looks to me in an eu45 that that width is probably about i'll zoom in quickly uh actually it's probably a bit too there we are the width there is about nine and a half centimetres. Yep, uh, nine and a half centimetres. Um, I did measure the, the length of these. It, it is correct, actually. It's roughly around about 285 uh, centimetres. Um, I'm going to get on to the criticisms of the shoe. Um, I will go into fit last because obviously the fit is unique to me. But I just think I want to go into the features as to why I think you should save your money use at £169, save for an extra month or two if you need to, and buy a higher quality shoe. I'm not going to actually criticise the insole because a lot of high quality shoes have terrible insoles. You're probably going to replace them anyways. The problem I have is um, they've cut corners. There's a lot of corners that have been cut. It looks like a good shoe. But the first thing that you'll realise actually is, is that the quality of the upper it's not breathable at all. Um, it really does feel like I'm wrapping cling film around my feet to some extent. I I, I mean, uh, we're not at the point of British summertime now, but it just, it, it, it's not, it's more of a plasticky feel as well. I, I can't really describe it. I think you have to get the shoe or visit the store to, to kind of see what I'm talking about. But for a carbon premium shoe, this is probably one of the, lower quality uppers that i've seen and if breathability is something that's important to you i mean don't be fooled by these sort of holes here i mean it, it's basically aesthetics if breathability is your thing um especially during a hot summer you might want to avoid these shoes um but look that's a corner that can be cut i mean I, I, if it was me personally and the shoes fit me and it was the only issue was breathability but i got a carbon plate i'd be willing to accept that but there are other corners that have been cut. One of them is, and I'm going to see if I can try and actually zoom in um, or try and hopefully get my phone to focus uh, as close as I can. You will see that actually there are vents here and here. Um, now, the construction of this is pretty piss poor. Um, as you can kind of see, if I can try and zoom in there, they're stitched in. And you even have the excess stitching here. People say, oh, you know, that might just be unique to the to the um, shoe that I was sent. Quality control issues. I mean, I'm, I'm actually going to head down to the store with my phone and I'll film so you can actually see that it's not just unique to the shoe that I had delivered. Um, they're stitched in. And actually, I think over time in terms of long, I mean, I could push through that. I really could. I'm pushing through that now. Over time, that's definitely going to rip. Um, not only is that going to rip, I think it's just not really that great in terms of quality. Um, I can see if I can try and get inside the shoe. I can't, obviously, I can't get in as far for you to see what the vent looks like at the front of the shoe. Um, but yeah, in terms of breathability, as I said, it, it's, it's, 
very plastic sheety, if that kind of makes sense, like a plastic sheet inside the shoe. It's not very breathable at all. Um, the sec third issue I had, so the first one again was breathability of the upper. The second one was actually um, cutting corners in terms of the manufacturing of certain features of the shoe. The third is the dials. Now, as I said earlier in the video, I know, I know these are LI2 dials. I know actually um, they, they have a lifetime warranty, um, but they're just not, I, I can't put my finger on it. A lot of what I'm describing to you, I, I feel like you have to experience in person. They're not as tactile um, or precise as I would want them to be. Um, again, if that's a compromise you're willing to accept, fine. And, and I mean, if the shoe fits fit fit me, it would have been a compromise I was willing to accept um it, it it's not a major issue um but you know for example i've got here uh, these are a much cheaper uh, pair of phys physiques um i believe it's a glass reinforced nylon uh, sole these are the um uh, r4s of course this has not got the li2 dials so they're much higher profiles you can see but just working with them there's there's just something about the tactile feel of the Boa dials, even though these aren't the premium Li2 ones, that just feels more tactile and more precise than the Van Rysels. Um, I can't put my finger on it. Honestly, I just think, you know, it's kind of useless me trying to describe it to you. You're just going to need to have to uh, uh, head down to the Cathlon store and try it out yourself. Now, I've mentioned that the uppers are not very breathable. I've mentioned that they've been corner, cut, corners cut in the construction. Actually, another point on the construction, I believe, actually, when I first got the shoe and I opened the box, you could still see some adhesive. I don't know if you can see here, but there was still some adhesive around parts. I mean, it's not really showing up on camera, but there were adhesive on parts of the shoe that shouldn't really be there. Um which obviously doesn't instill any confidence. Um, so yeah, I've mentioned the upper, I've mentioned that the manufacturing and construction, there have been some corners that have been cut, nothing detrimental to the quality of the shoe per se. Um, the third thing I did mention was just that, although these are LI2 dials, I do notice a difference uh, between these and the precision and the tactile feel of that compared to um, even some cheaper Boa dials. Now the, 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 I think it's the third or the fourth, I'm kind of losing count now. The fourth main thing actually is the weight of the shoe. I'm going to go and get a scale now. Um, so the video will cut temporarily whilst I go and get a scale. And I'll, I'll weigh this shoe. This is a size 45. Um, for a premium carbon shoe, um, they're a bit on the heavier side. And if I'm honest with you, this is a carbon shoe. This is a, a, a glass reinforced nylon composite shoe these with cleats feel lighter than the van Rysels. and you know if you've not had premium cycling shoes before light cycling shoes before you're thinking oh you know that's not really a big deal but actually it makes a really big difference to how i feel on the bike being able to cycle in a lighter shoe um but enough of me talking about that i'm going to cut the video here grab a scale uh weigh them in a this is an eu 45 um and then, yeah, you can just kind of see what the weight is. So I'm back. Sorry, sorry for the delay on that. Back with a scale. Uh, ooh, let me find out where's best to put this box. I'll just leave that here. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to, uh, hopefully that's visible, put the insole back in and weigh the shoe. These weighed, I haven't weighed them actually, should have done before filming this, but it'll be news for me too. These weigh in an EU 45, 316 grams. Now, if you compare that to similar spec shoes, and this is a carbon shoe, that's heavy. That is heavy. Um, and when I tried the shoes on, I could feel it. Um, to be honest, I can't be bothered to take the cleats off my physiques. Um, this, it, this, these have a as I said, carbon, not carbon, sorry, um, glass reinforced nylon plate. Um, with the cleats on, that weighs less with the cleats on, 
without a carbon sole than these shoes. You know what? Just for the sake of argument, I'm going to try and remember the cleat position, remove the cleats, and you can actually see the difference in weight again. Right, sorry for the chopping and changing and stopping the video and restarting. I've taken the um, cleats off, my SVD cleats off these physiques. They say they have a carbon injected sole. It's not carbon sole. Look, this weighs 260 grams. And that's not even, this isn't a premium shoe. And this is actually obviously considered for a mid-range shoe. This is really good. Um, but where is that weight coming from? From the Van Rysel? Where is it coming from? I think, you know, this is just my theory. I might be wrong. I think it comes from the upper, really. I think there's a lot of weight um, around the heel. Um, if I kind of hold the shoe, I mean, it's probably not, I can't really get the angle right. But if I, it, it's much more heel heavy particularly around the heel counter, which does have some really nice padding, to be honest. Um, and also the plastic here. Um, it's heavy. It's heavy. And I just think the quality of the upper as well. The upper here is significantly less. I mean, I'm not doing a comparison between the physique and the Van Rijssel. That's not the purpose of this. But just as a point of contrast or comparison, the upper here feels a lot more lighter and breathable and sleek. Um this feels like fake leather. That's kind of what this feels. It, it, it kind of is what it's trying to mimic. And it's, yeah, it's just, I wasn't impressed. You know, I was not impressed. And I think, you know, when you add that all up together, the corners that have been cut in terms of the quality of the manufacturing of the shoe, um, the tactile, and I, I feel like there's just a lack of precision on the dials, even though they are Li2, um, the quality of the upper, and the weight of the shoe, there are four corners or four things that I think have been cut or four things that it's difficult to compromise on. It's difficult for me to compromise on, right? But the killer blow is they don't fit. Um, I picked out the right shoe size. I'm going to actually show you how they fit on my feet. Um, and they just have a weird fit. They fit perfectly in terms of length. As I said, my right foot, I had a shoe fit. My right foot measures at 285 millimeters. In the uh, size chart, this was the recommended size. They do fit right in terms of length between my heel and the longest part of the front of my foot. Where they don't fit actually is actually more, I just have to demonstrate it to you. It's a bit weird. Um, but yeah, the fit for me isn't right. And obviously that's to kill a blow. Even if the fit was right, there are four things that I think, you know, when it comes to cycling shoes, you want something that's breathable. You want something, if you're spending more than 150 quid, that, you know, even if it hasn't got a carbon sole, still has a good construction um, in terms of manufacturing quality. Something that is reasonably lightweight. Um, and I, I think you can cut corners on the dials. I mean, these are manageable. You can live with them. But I would have preferred that the dials were either separated further apart or that the sort of lacing of the shoe ran a bit further so I could feel more secure around here. It just kind of bunches up. Um, There's not really pressure points, but the pressure kind of just bunches up around here, which doesn't, at least when I've tried on the shoe, doesn't actually instill any confidence. Um, What I did when I was testing the shoes was... Um, Obviously, when I first tried them on, um, as you cycle, your 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 feet do swell up and they expand. So to try and mimic that effect, obviously, I can't put my cleats in this shoe and take them for a ride. Otherwise, I void my ability to return them. Um, I had a hot shower, um, allowed my feet to <laughs> uh, um, sort of swell up in, in the shower, came out, dried my feet, put my socks on and put these on immediately. And again, I was still having issues with the fit. Um, they were just a little bit too, not big, big is not the right word because they are perfect for me in terms of the length, in terms of the width around about here at the forefoot, fine. It's more so actually the rest of the upper foot here where there was a bit more space. It's, it's just weird. Um, there was a review left by someone, I think in another language, I had to translate it. It was, um, on the Cathalon's website, but he also mentioned he had the same issues where they fit in terms of length, but around the front of the shoe and also at the heel just a lot of slippage um so i'm going to show you that now i'm going to put on the shoes and, and and yeah try and conclude a review of that um you don't have to stay and watch me 
try on the shoes. Obviously, everyone's foot is different. I've kind of given you a comprehensive background into the review. I'm going to head to the Decathlon store and continue the video um, when I'm going to return these and actually also show you them in the size down where you see that actually I don't have the issues um, at the front of the foot, but the I've had to compromise by actually wearing a shoe that's too small in terms of length. But anyways, um, you can end the video here. If you want to see me head down to the Decathlon store, um, keep watching the video. If you want to see me try these on, keep watching the video. But they're sort of the main things I wanted to sum up as to, I think, the fact that too many corners have been cut, particularly with the weight and the quality of the upper and the craftsmanship and manufacturing corners that have been cut. That makes me say, if you can, try and spend a little bit more for a better shoe or you can actually get a really stiff shoe that is does not have a carbon sole, that is lighter and has a better upper. For example, these physiques. I did pick them up off Wiggle during the sale, so obviously it's a bit unfair. Obviously, their sales were a bit unique with the position that they were in. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend these shoes. Um, even if they fit you, you've got to ask yourself, are these other corners that have been cut that I've mentioned compromises that you're willing to take on? But anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of rambling on. I'm going to end this part of the review here, going to try on the shoes and you can just see how they fit me and the issues that I had with the fit. So um, I have chucked on a pair of socks. Uh, these are my feet. Um, as I said, I had a shoe fit. Unfortunately, um, I had one for free, actually, um, at the um, Olympic Velodrome um, in London. Um, I won't go to how I got one for free. I'll do that later. Um, but yeah, basically, as I said, my... Um, my, it's not visible, but my right foot is five millimeters longer than my left. Um, earlier I said that my, I can't remember, I got the measurements wrong, um, in terms of centimeters, millimeters, um, 285 millimeters on the right, 280 on the left. I do notice that when I'm wearing shoes. Um, also there is a slight difference in the width of my feet as well. Um, during the shoe fit, we found that my, um, uh, my right foot, is about 10 is 10 and a half centimeters long my left was 10 centimeters long um so i do think um when it comes to shoe fits and shoe sizing um even if you can't afford the shoe fit well i can't i was fortunate enough to get one for free um and i don't think they're worth i mean they charge a fortune in some of these bike fitters for them please 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 do not rely on uk us or eu sizes get the measurement of your feet even if you have to do this yourself and it's a rough measurement you're going to get far have far less trouble when it comes to finding shoes um when you have the exact millimeter measurements or centimeter measurements um than you would do if you're just relying on shoe sizes because obviously some brands choose to do that a bit differently but that is besides the point the purpose of the review is to show you why they don't fit me. I thought the best way to illustrate this would be again to take out the insole and to put my foot on the insole um, out of the shoe just so you can see um, or I can describe to you a bit better what I've been experiencing. <clears throat> so uh, again, I've got the shoe, I'll get the right one and take the insole out, pop these here. So again, that's the insole. I'm gonna zoom in a bit just so you can see a bit better. That's probably, yeah, that's great. Um, where do I begin? So I, if I pop my foot down and I add a bit of weight to my foot, so I'm, I'm fully standing up now. What you can actually see is, in terms of length, it's really good. Um, this again is my, my longer foot, my right foot, 285 millimetres. The width is about five millimetres tighter, but you know, the upper of this, listen, it's not rigid. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I, I can manage with that five, them being five millimetres uh, shorter in terms of width uh, for me. But what you'll notice is, is that there's a lot of space uh, around about here. Kind of, I've got the length right. But my my toes kind of they come in like a they sort of come down like this. Um, then they don't really spread out as much um, or, or sort of follow this wider sort of curve that the shoe has been designed as. They come straight down. 
So what ends up happening is when I've got the shoe on, my heel's right at the far back of the, in, of the insole now. When I've got the shoe on, in terms of length from my big toe to my heel, perfect. But there's a lot of wiggle room in the shoe, even though it is the right length. And the reason for that is, is that if, for example, I try and push my foot further towards the forefoot inside of the shoe, what happens is, is that my big toe pushes right against here and my, my feet almost somewhat pivot to fill in this space. It just It's just ever so slight, basically. But when I do that, for example, and now I feel a lot more confident when my whole forefoot is covered by the shoe, you'll notice two things. The first is, again, as I mentioned with my big toe, is that it kind of exceeds the length of the shoe. I'm really pushing against the, uh, the forefoot of the shoe. The second thing is, is that by now occupying the space that was originally here, I end up with space at the heel. Um, and that shows I'm going to put the shoes on and I can actually fit my fingers into the heel. Um, and it's weird. It's kind of like they're the right length. You can see that here um, with, the, with the size chart. I've measured the insoles. They are the right length for me. But there's just something about the forefoot that leaves me with a lot of space here that in other shoes I haven't had issues with. That means basically the way to eliminate this is to go for a uh, the size down, down to a 44. And I did. I went down to the Decathlon store. They had one in stock. I tried on the 44. But the problem with that is, is that I'm now wearing a shoe that is too small because from the longest part of the front of my foot to my heel becomes too short just to fill in this space basically they don't fit they don't fit i'm gonna try on the shoe now uh i'll put them on two secs try and get these back in uh just so i can show you what i mean with the with my feet actually inside of the shoes um Again, like I said, I have to keep this in pristine condition because I am returning them. Um, yeah, let me put them on. I'll zoom out temporarily. Yeah, there we are. Uh, let's get these on. I mean, look, they're not bad. If they fit and you're willing to accept the corners that have been cut, go for them. Um, but as I said, if this was further down, yeah, I would very much prefer that. Nice lock down there. Now, the first thing that was evident to me when I put the shoes on that, that made me realise that they actually don't fit was, um, I don't know if you can kind of see around here at the, oh, again, I'll zoom in again. Um, when I apply pressure at the heel, you'll see actually here where the ankle is sort of opens up and that's usually an indication that the shoe is too small or that there's space in the shoe that shouldn't necessarily be there. It should be a snug fit, um, but not that amount of space. Now, in terms of the length, really good. But now let me see if I can crouch down and there's a lot of space here, as I showed you with just the, um, with just the, uh, the insoles earlier there is a lot of space and as i, I try to sort of mimic that pedaling movement it it, I, I, it feels like the space that sh there should that should be occupied in the shoe that isn't being filled even though they are the right length um <clears throat> now if i basically try and put my weight down on my foot and push my toes forward towards the end of the shoe what ends up happening is I feel that space now feels a lot more firm and secure at the forefoot, which I like. But then I have a lot of space in the heel to the point where I can, I don't know if you can see this, I can actually fit in both of my fingers in here, even though the length is correct. Um, again, what's happening is, is that my, my big toe is pushing right into now the uh, end of the shoe 
and my other toes are now occupying the space that was previously vacant. I feel like I'm talking about a toilet or something like that. Basically, it was previously, previously vacant. Um, and so now I've got the confidence at the forefoot, but then I've got a lot of slippage at the heel. Um, and someone would say, oh, they're, they're not the right size. They're too long for you. They are not too long. When you measure them from the longest part of my toe to my heel, they are the correct length. But it's not just the length. It's also how it shapes around the shoe in my forefoot. It leaves a lot of space that needs to be occupied. I try to size down. I'm going to head to the Decathlon store, do this type of point of view um, shot so you can see with me in the store, me trying to size down. And you'll see what happens is, is that they end up being too, a bit shorter than necessary just so I can get the rest of my foot to fit in. And at that point, I don't want to be in shoes that are the wrong length just so that they somewhat fit me. Um, and that, again, would affect the cleat position. I'm, I'm not going to go into detail that. I'm sure you already know. Basically, they don't fit. And they don't fit not because of the length, but because of the way the shoe is designed. And they don't fit my feet. Um, so I'm going to pause the video here, head down to the Cathalon store, return these, um, show you again with the same type of shot, but me wearing the size 44. Um, I believe they still have one in stock when I checked before I started the video. And you can kind of see that I can account for this space in the heel, but the shoes actually end up being uh, too uh, short. Uh, yeah, so I'll leave that there. Um, you, I mean, you can end the video here. If you do want to see me go down to the Decathlon store, uh, yeah, just keep watching. So I headed down to the Decathlon store in Surrey Keys in London. Uh, this is their flagship store. Um, You've probably realized on the Cathalon's website, they recently have a rebrand. Um, that rebrand also applies to the store as well. So uh, things look a little bit new inside. Um, I did take a quick sort of shot around of the cycling area. They've got a dedicated cycling section with, with all their new bikes showcased. And yeah, I think ever since they've obviously got this new pro team, um, a lot of the quality of the bikes look amazing. I'll take this shoe off so you can see. Um, Let's have a look. You can kind of see. Let me take that off. You can kind of see. I'm going to stand up. Um, this is an accurate representation, actually, of what it feels like inside the shoe. So you can see here that my toe, that's not my nail, it's actually my toe ever so slightly is pushing against up and against just right at the top of the shoe here um, but that's a lot of the space in the 45 has been closed off here um, which gives me a bit more wriggle room for example um, I'm really not sure actually um, as I said I'm, I'm in the Cathalon now um, it's pretty warm I can feel that the shoes aren't that breathable um, and again this is uh, the 44s and again the same issues I had the 45s here I'm not too sure what to do. That's the 44s. Yeah. They fit a bit better. Um, much better than the 45s. So that's probably something about the size chart. Um, but that being said, they're not perfect uh, in terms of fit. And I can sort of feel some pressure points in the 44, particularly around um, here and also right at the top of my foot as well, that it feels fine now, but I can't say that it's going to feel like that after two hours of riding. So I've got some DMTs arriving today from Amazon. I'm going to try those on. I'm going to leave the 44s here. This is actually a display version. Return the 45s. Um, and then, yeah, I'll, I'll get back home and conclude the review and sort of just give you my final thoughts having tried both sizes so i'm gonna review here um yeah uh i'm not really gonna repeat myself i think it's been an extensive review um i don't recommend the shoe plain and simple um i've tried to make the review as extensive as possible just so you know i know a lot of you around the world actually may not have access to a decathlon store nearby um but you might be unsure about the shoe to my advice to you is like don't buy it thinking oh, it looks really good be seduced by the looks and then 
you're on a ride for two to three hours and you realize that the shoe's painful and you're trying to ignore the fact that actually they really don't fit. Um, I actually ended up, uh, I'm filming this two or three days after the original review, um, I just ended up buying a pair of DMT's SH10's. Um, yeah, and I picked these up in the 44 and they are goddamn perfect. Perfect in fit, uh, perfect in breathability, perfect in the fact that there's no heel slippage or the reinforced counter, um, perfect in terms of the rigidity of the carbon sole. Uh, you can see that there. Again, it's not the review on the DMTs, um, but I mean, I bit the bullet and spent quite a bit on shoes and I can definitely tell the difference already between that and the Van Rysels. So yeah, I hope uh, this review is helpful. Again, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I will be monitoring them and answering them if I can. Um, you know, you may have had a different experience in the Van Rysels. You may have found them to be really good. If, if they have been for you, yeah, just leave those comments below. Um, yeah, let us know if you've come from somewhere else. and. Uh, yeah, I hope this really helped out. Uh, so yeah, take care.